Hey guys, welcome to another Dorkside Cookies video. In today's Cthulhu Wars strategy series, we're going to be going over the Sleeper Faction. Hey guys, all right, so let's just get into it. Um, obviously, Arm is still in a sling, and uh, really appreciate everybody's patience. But uh, I, I just want to I wanna get in, I want to do it. I uh, have only been playing with Sleeper Faction for about a month now, I think. And now I get it. Everybody commented down in the, in the comments of several different videos. And I think I got at least one or two emails asking what about Sleeper. Wow, these guys are cool. They're different. A lot of people call them perhaps the most passive faction. I actually think that's uh, kind of a misconception or misconstruement. They're really, I th in my opinion, the most reactive faction. So I can't give you a strategy. I can only give you a lot of micro strategies, things to look for, things to take advantage of, and ultimately what Sleeper's best at, which is how to react to the choices other players make because that's that's what sleeper is all about now who 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 is sleeper where you know um i think not a lot of games based on in hp lovecraft cthulian mythos kind of stuff a lot of them don't have or don't mention sleeper uh it's not like yag sothoth or Nairlatotep, right um, this guy is uh, a creation of another author. Uh, he's from the Hyperborean cycle, I think. And um, he was referenced several times uh, in H.P. Lovecraft works. So here you go. I mean, that's, that's Sleeper, uh, Glow in the Dark version. What is pretty cool is in several of the books, it specifically calls out the, uh, I don't know, tentacle liquid-like monsters, obviously kind of, kind of seem similar to a Shagath, but, um, I guess they're more watery, more, you know, more come out of somewhere. And this faction subterranean, it's underground, kind of goes with it. But I love that the formless spawn and he has, and this faction has four of them is such a, an important part of the faction because um, they, when you see Sothogwa me mentioned, you are generally going to see Formless Spawn mentioned. I mean, maybe every single time. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You've got the Serpent Men. Uh, I like the Serpent Men. I always like the Serpent Men. Serpent Men, I believe, are just from the, um, I can't remember the name of the story. Someone down below, maybe you can reference it. But the, uh, I think it's from the Old West story. I'm a little bit surprised because you'd think this would be a Yig thing, but maybe maybe there wasn't going to be a Yig faction. Yig is already a neutral Great Old One. Not that that stops them, but you know. Okay, so we got Serpent Men, and we got Weirdo Wizards. I don't know what's going on with these guys. This, uh, he, I mean, it's a guy holding the mouth of a lamprey kind of thing who is, I believe, himself. I don't know that the wizard is the man on top or that the wizard is really um, like a caterpillar who has the back end that looks like eyeballs. I, I don't know. I feel like the wizard might be the, mon the weird monster. Um, it looks like the spinal cord doesn't go into, like through the human, the wizard guy on top. There's some weird stuff going on here. What story is this from? Somebody please share it with me because obviously a generic wizard that Google search isn't gonna be good. Just tell me where it comes from because it's pretty cool. They're cool, but I don't know where it comes from. I have no idea. Okay, so <laughs> normally, uh, normally I like to kind of say like, you should get the spell books in this order. It's very hard here because the spell books, you really, only want spellbooks 
Well, it's, it's hard for them to get spell books in general, maybe harder than many of the factions. So you really have to watch the other players and make sure that you're getting the best spell book at the right time. Um, all right, so let's let's start with with the units. Uh, let's, let's start with where do you start? You start in North America. Makes sense. They seem seem to have like a lot of well, it's kind of a, a void. Also, in general, they just feel like they're uh, North American monsters. What with the uh, Serpent Men, I don't know why, guys. It, Makes sense to me. So they're in North America and there's uh, the unique ability for them, death from below. You place uh, this uh, doom phase action. Um, the, during the doom phase, you place your lowest cost monster from your pool to any area containing any of your units. So the, the first, uh, first turn, you're going to place a wizard for free. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be where a gate is. It, it can pop up anywhere. Uh, you know, it's first doom phase. If this, if this was the board, you just put it out in North America because that's where you have units. If you had a cultist here and you felt safe leaving him there, you could summon a gate and then um, trust that you, you'd have time to put a unit out and protect him. Um, once, once you run out of wizards, those cost one and have zero combat strength. Then you you start putting down your serpent men because the serpent men cost two and they're the least expensive in your pool. So you uh, you know you place a serpent men and then a, the next turn and then the next turn and then the game's over, guys. Come on now, you're not getting a formless spawn like that. So if you want uh, if you want to build a place a formless spawn for free which normally costs three, then you need to make sure that you aggressively deploy monsters. And so that's, that's something to keep in mind. There, uh, you know, Sleeper has two types of monsters. Effectively, they have utility monsters, which include the wizards and the serpent men. They are not meant for combat. They're a little bit closer to say like flying polyps who, uh, like for me, flying polyps are really all about their invisibility power or, um, yeah, invisibility. Whereas, um, you know, a lot of the other units, you bring them for combat. You bring a Shagath for combat. You bring a star spawn really for combat. Um, formless spawn, they exist for combat. So if you have all of your basically like special, your monsters with special powers, then you can start putting out your formless spawn for free. That's pretty cool. I've never seen it get that far though. Nobody gets all of the monsters out. Um, and it's in everybody else's best interest to kill these units too. So, but if it did happen, good on you. Awesome. Um, formless spawn, they have no spell book, but they have a combat strength equal to the number of formless spawn and with uh, Sethogwa in play. So one is one, two is two and two. This is on the board. So uh, one over here, one over there. It's still two and two. It doesn't matter. They're always two and two. All right. Um, three, three and three. Sethogwa is somewhere. And now it is uh, four, four and four. So this is how they work and they max out as a uh, five, 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 and five. Um, there's no restriction to them being alone. They're not like proto -shagats. They, you know, they, they're truly that much more powerful. So two of them is 10, it's 10 combat strength. It's pretty crazy. Um, no spell books. No survival ability. They don't have um, really any monsters to to protect things, except the wizards. We'll talk about the wizards in a moment, but you need spellbooks for that. So let's look at at the spellbooks, and then we'll start talking about the best uses with with their corresponding monster. All right. So the. <laughs> 
This is not necessarily a good order, guys. I'm just, I'm just choosing a spell book. Ancient Sorcery. Action cost one. Remove a Serpent Man from the map and place him on an enemy faction card. Until the next Doom phase, you have access to that faction's unique ability. During the Doom phase, gain one power and place a Serpent Man in any area. If the unique ability mentions a faction's Great Old One, it is considered to also include Sethogwa. Okay? So, for example, you put a Serpent Man on the Chocho board. Now, I know it says, so the Chocho's power goes off in the Doom phase, and Ancient Sorcery goes until the Doom phase, but my understanding is that technically uh, you can choose at what point in the Doom phase that you pull him back. It just has to be in the Doom phase. So you can wait until after Sycophancy has gone off. So Chocho, during the Doom phase, when an enemy player does a Ritual of Annihilation, either you gain one Doom or he gains one fewer Doom, his choice. So um, at this point, with a Serpent Man on the Chocho board, you now, um, anybody who does a Ritual of Annihilation is going to be, you know, either slowing himself down or giving you Doom points. Um, which is, I mean, that's just, that's just nice. Windwalker does a lot of uh, rituals, so that can be good. Uh, Yellow Sign often tries to do rituals. Any of the two, um, two great old one factions probably going to do a lot of rituals, so... That's cool. Um, what about Great Cthulhu? Right, his reads a little bit differently, right? He has the immortal unique ability. Once Cthulhu has awakened, he costs only four power each additional time he's awakened. Whenever you awaken any great old one, gain one elder sign. So you spend one power, you put the serpent man on the board, and now anywhere that it reads Cthulhu, you now have to read it as if it says Sethogwa. So once Sethogwa has awakened, he costs only four power each additional time he's awakened. Whenever you awaken any great, uh, whenever you awaken any great old one, gain one elder sign. So, <laughs> okay, now we're starting to talk about some timing. If Ancient sorcery. Like if, if if a player has a faction power that seems good, great Cthulhu. If you were to summon him second turn, you might want ancient sorcery first turn, so that you could copy his power and get a elder sign. Okay. Um, also, Cthulhu is great anyways because once you can start really rampaging with. Um, with Sleeper, and instead of costing eight each time that he dies, he only costs four. So that's that's pretty nice. Plus, at that point, you're getting a, a Elder Sign every time, too. So that's cool. Uh, Black Goat, don't copy his power. It's not good. Doesn't make sense. Uh, Windwalker. Windwalker is pretty cool. Okay, so add plus one to your power for each enemy Great Old One in play, but you cannot more than double your current power in doing so. You can perform no more actions during the rest of this action phase. As if you were at zero power, add your current power to your total next gather power phase. So uh, towards the end of the round, you have one or two power. You go ahead and move that over and you're going to get, um, you know, the remainder of your power to add to the next turn. Keep in mind that it says it's an action cost one, but it doesn't actually cost you one. So it, you get it back. When, you know, the next turn, when you pull it back and you put it somewhere on the board, you got the one power back. So you're actually just moving it to the next turn. Effectively, if you did this every single turn, it cost you one until you stop doing it, then you have it back because every turn you can just spend it again and do it again. But you're not locked into it, which is pretty nice. 
The other thing is it saves you on movement because let's say that you lose a monster, you're about to lose your gate, um, turn ends, you just put it there, now you have a protector, right? So uh, pretty straightforward. Crawling Chaos. Uh, all your units can fly, even cultists. When moved, they can travel to areas. They can fly over areas containing enemy units. So Crawling Chaos, uh, you actually have kind of a lot of mobility powers as Sleeper, but if it's valuable, flying is good. Most of the time you can get anywhere on the entire board with flying. All right, yellow sign. Uh, gain plus one power for each area containing both a desecration token and one or more of your units. That can really irritate um, yellow sign. They're you know wandering through rampaging, desecrating things. And you say, well, that's great, but I'm going to get some of your power. So that's yellow, yellow sign is almost guaranteeing. It almost guarantees to give you some extra power because if you copy yellow sign, then the next turn you can just teleport to wherever the desecration token is. Um, they have a couple different things like that. So yeah. Opener of the way, uh, action cost one, the beyond one. Select one of your units with a cost of three plus in an area with a gate, but lacking any enemy great old one, move that unit, the gate, and any controlling unit to any area on the map lacking a gate. So the only one of your units is the formless spawn that can actually activate opener of the way. Um, that it is cool. Opener of the way steals your gate. You steal it right back. Um, that is cool. But let's be realistic. Um, the best factions for you to face off against probably Yellow Sign and Windwalker is pretty good. Cthulhu is great. Uh, Chocho is pretty nice. So you... If, if you were in a three-player game against Black Goat and, and Opener of the Way, it would be pretty sad for you. I, I actually, I don't think I would play the uh, Sleeper Faction against just those two. It's fine in a five-player game, which is normally what we play anyways, but three-player game, things get weird in general in Cthulhu Wars. But keep in mind, important bits, it does not really cost you any power because you get the creature back. So on the other hand, if you don't have the power to spend on it, you're robbing yourself of another faction's ability. So definitely you need to use it a lot. All right. So should you get it first turn? Most of the time, probably not. It only really makes sense with... Um, Cthulhu, yellow sign, maybe. Um, you just got to keep in mind, you got to look out, look at the board, look at the players. It could make sense. All right. Uh, the other faction spellbook or monster spellbook is Energy Nexus. It's ongoing. Now, this is huge. This is different. Nothing else works like this. This is a big deal. Just before a battle occurs in an area containing a wizard, you may take one action that originates in the area for normal power cost. When you finish the action, the battle proceeds, starting with the pre-battle spellbooks and abilities. So, uh, to the short of it, anything that originates in the area where the battle is taking place can be done. So spawn a Yogg-Sothoth shows up and you say as an, an attacks, he, he spends one power to attack. You say, I'm going to spend one power to move away. So uh, now my wizard's free and clear. Sathogwa. So Sathogwa is actually pretty weak. His power equals the, generally, sometimes, most of the time, his power equals 
the remaining power of your opponent. So your enemy attacks you with one power uh, or two, whichever is higher. So spawn a Yaxothoth, he attacks, he is a three combat die monster, and <laughs> you he only has, let's say, one power left. Let's say he has three power, he spends one to attack, now he's down to two. That means you have two combat dice, he has three combat dice. Sothogwa is about to be whipped by a spawn of Yaxothoth, but Sothogwa, his, uh, his spellbook, which is, is a capture monster. So Sothogwa can capture enemy monsters in the same manner as cultists are captured, and they are sacrificed for one power in the next gather power phase. So capture monster, Spawn of Sothoth makes a mistake to attack. Your wizard gives you, via energy nexus, the ability to do a pre-action. So normally, Sothogwa just runs. That's what he does. You, energy nexus, move away. We'll talk about why it's efficient in a moment. But um, against a single monster, heck no. Not, not in Sothogwa's house. Capture monster. Action cost one. Sothogwa can capture enemy monsters. Same manner as cultists. So, boom. Same manner as cultists. There's one monster. That means it's just automatic. You put it on your board. And at the... Um, gather power phase of the next turn, you sacrifice it and you get one power. So he can't even summon it again. It's brutal. Okay. <laughs> now, just just to answer some, some clarif clarifying points. If he attacks with two monsters, then as a pre-battle, pre-action, then you can uh, spend one power via energy nexus to capture monster but the attacking player in this scenario would choose which of the two monsters is going to get sacrificed or get captured so uh, probably the mutant or abomination and uh, now Sothogwa is about to wh get whipped again in this scenario two monsters you probably just wouldn't even try to capture them you just run away because why sleeper just there's just no value in really attacking like that. Um, that's Capture Monster. Capture Monster is super cool in general, but it's really powerful with Energy Nexus. So Thogwa's best friend is to have a wizard. That's a, it's, it's a buddy cop kind of movie once you have Sleeper going on. So, so Wizard, Sothogwa, they hang out together and Sleeper becomes invincible and super powerful. Um, as long as you have enough power to do stuff because energy nexus doesn't save you any power it just makes it you know something you can do in response all right so we talked about capture monster let's talk about demand sacrifice demand sacrifice is a true pre-battle if sothogwa is in play your enemy chooses one of the following options before a battle with you you gain an elder sign or all of their kill results count as pains on your units in this battle. So they're gonna have to make a choice. Either you get an Elder Sign or um, they can't kill you. That's, that's really the choice. Demand Sacrifice does not just protect Sothogwa, protects everybody. All Sleeper Faction units are, um, are protected by Demand Sacrifice. Um, it is the primary way that Sleeper would get Elder Signs if they were to get any Elder Signs whatsoever. Otherwise, you, they have to hope that they have Cthulhu to uh, use, use Ancient Sorcery to copy. Yeah, that's it. They're, I mean, they're gonna get one for a great old one in Rituals of Annihilation, but that's pretty rough. Okay, so what do we have left? Well, let's talk about Cursed Slumber. Action cost one, remove your controlled gate and its cultist from the map 
and place it on your faction card, this gate and cultist still provide power and doom points, but are immune to enemy abilities. As a cost one ability, or as, as a cost one action, return the gate and cultist to any area lacking a gate. You may only have one gate on your faction card at a time. So do not do this if you can ever. That should be your goal. Now, that's a problem for some of you who look at it and think, oh my God, that's amazing. Boom. Don't do that. Um, ideally, you know, you would have a gate. You would have a wizard to protect it. You would have energy nexus. And Yogg-Sothoth, opener of the way, attacks with a spawn. And as a pre-battle standard action, Cursed Slumber cost one, you move the gate and the cultist off onto the board. That would be ideal. If they don't have six spell books left, you don't even need a wizard. You just wait for the attack. The moment somebody attacks you, it's your turn, spend one action, or one power, and now they have nothing to steal. Now, in our games, Opener of the Way is very powerful. It's always used. Somebody plays Opener of the Way, like the, pla the past nine games has had an Opener of the Way, and they steal gates all the time. It's... I don't know, I'm trying to discourage it, but th that's what they do. And uh, Sleeper doesn't care about that. If you have Cursed Slumber and you have one power left. So that leaves us with one spell book. Burrow. After a move action in which you spend two or more power moving units, regain one power. So. Spend one, well, spend two power to move Sathogwa and a wizard, get, get one back. So you have to have the two, but if you have the two, then you get the one back automatically. So it effectively costs you one. That's important though, right? Because when you have one power, just like Crawl and Chaos, when they have zero power, you cannot do the thing that saves you power. So you, you know, you need to have some power left over for Burrow. But if you have it, both of them are gonna to get to go for the pot cost of one. All right, so what do we have here? Um, why, why do people struggle with Sleeper? Number one, you run out of power. You can't do it, it's a mistake. Number two, you attack with Satogwa at the end of the round after everybody else runs out of power, okay? If you do that, that was a mistake, probably. Satogwa doesn't have any power, has, doesn't have any combat strength at that point. It's best to attack once or twice at the beginning of the round when units have a lot of power. So um, in a perfect world, when Zathogwa dies using that strategy, then you use Cthulhu faction's power to bring him back for cheap. But use him when he's strong, have him run away using Energy Nexus when he's weak. Um, he can steal gates using Capture Monster, so totally viable at the end of the round to, you see a gate, um, and Cthulhu's out of power, go ahead, move Sothogwa and his wizard buddy into South America, for example. One, capture monster. It's free, right? You capture the monster at the next turn. It costs you one, but at the next turn, you're gonna get one back. And then next turn, uh, capture cultist. 
uh, again, it costs you one, but then you're going to get one back the next turn. This is all, all the Cthulhu factions play a little bit like this, right? You spend a power to get it back the next turn. You summon a high priest, but you get it back the next turn. That's just how a lot of things work. Sleeper just leverages it to the hilt. That's their thing. Um, if, if Sathoga can wander around at the end of the, of the map or end of the round without opposition, then he is going to be able to effectively for free lock in a lot of gates. So what you really want to do, I think most games is I believe that you really want to get Sathogwa by third turn, okay? You want to move power from one round to the next. And I really don't care how you do it. Like, I don't care about the efficiency. I know ancient sorcery moving the serpent men to other other boards like um, black goat it doesn't give you this cool power that's fine but what it does do is it moves power to the next turn right if you would start turn two with 12 power but you actually managed to get three serpent men off on ancient sorcery then you would start second turn 15 power and you'd go first so um also, at that point, once you have successfully moved, ideally at least three power to another turn, you really need to consider activating one of your actions. If you can make every other, if you can go first, second turn, and make every other player lose one power, there's a chance they won't be able to summon their great old one. And that can really suck for if Black Goat managed to wait um, if Crawl and Chaos expected to get their um, Narlatotep out second turn, if you can stop them, you should. That's, it sucks that you have to spend three power. However, use it, use it, uh, use it to your best ability. If you're playing Chocho, probably give him three power. That's what, it, that's what I would generally recommend. What can he do with it? Not much. Um, I, I know I know some of you like Chocho. Um, we like Chocho too. Um, a lot of people play Chocho and Chocho wins. But um, they win strangely. So uh, I don't consider them a direct threat. I consider them a um, like a pacemaker. They... Uh, they will keep going at a certain speed and they will just end the game if you don't stop them. So uh, give them three power. I don't think it's going to affect them too much. They might expand, which might be a mistake somebody else can capitalize on. Um, the give every other player one power, that's, I mean, that's never great. If you are in the lead, if you have a lot of power, um, I, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend doing it. I would actually do it when I don't have a lot of gates, but I did manage to move power to the next turn. Again, <laughs> three serpent men, three spell books that each cost three power. So you just move some power to the next turn and you get it back uh, the next turn so that you can so you can spend it on spell books. The uh, roll six or more combat dice in a single battle, that's gonna be hard, except Formless Spawn do get a lot of combat dice. Um, performing a Ritual of Annihilation. Okay, so I like to know how do factions win? Like um, Cthulhu, he wins by battle. He is either gonna take gates, um, which gives him doom points, which allows him to win. Or Cthulhu is going to die, and you're going to summon Cthulhu again, which gives you Elder Signs, which helps you win. 
right? They're a battle faction. That's how they, that's how they do things. Um, Nyarlathotep, I consider them an assassin faction. They kill goos. They, they kill great old ones. That's, um, that's kind of their deal. That's how they win. That's how they get extra power. That's how they get extra um, elder signs. So who are the sleeper? What, what do they do? How do they win? Well, combat really doesn't help them. In fact, except for the one spell books, roll six or more combat dice in a single battle, that doesn't really help them much. They can get a lot of doom points at the end of rounds by stealing gates. And it's even better if you can steal gates, abandon the gates, and then steal the gates again. Because um, if you abandon the gates, you're not going to have as many losses. You're going to be able to defend two or three gates better than you can um, four or five. And then at the end of the turn, you just steal some back again. That, that works. I mean, that's, that's pretty much... Um, that's how you remain a threat throughout the entire game. But otherwise, I mean, you're going to be doing Rituals of Annihilation. Uh, hopefully, you end turns with a lot of gates, and you're able to do one or two Rituals of Annihilation, if not, if not three. And uh, the only way you can do that probably is by trying to remain as not not much of a threat and making it so that attacking you is a waste of power. So you spend power with the wizard protecting protecting Sithogwa. You have your ridiculously overpowered formless spawn defending your two or three gates and people would rather pick on somebody else. Um, if you don't have any elder signs it's going to be hard because the moment you get the moment you get above 22 doom and you don't have elder signs they know that all you need to do is get four gates and then a ritual of annihilation and you win so it's it's best if you get some extra elder signs obviously and ideally you get that from other people's factions or even your own demand sacrifice so um with that, that's, I mean, that's the key. You, you don't want to use your powers first. That's, that's it. Like you don't, don't do, um, don't do cursed slumber first. Get it, make it so that everybody's afraid of wasting their time. Especially in the early game, nobody wants to try to steal your gate and then you're just gone vanish. Um, capture monster, uh, it, it just breaks even. So it's a nice threat, but it doesn't give you power, it just moves it to the next turn. You still need a way to get more power. And the only way you can really get more power is through, um, through other, people's, other people's powers. Um, you are getting monsters for free. So, so keep that in mind. If you can get it so that you're getting formless spawn for free, they're going to get ever more powerful every single turn. Um, yeah. That, that is Sleeper Faction. I, I hope I did them justice. I feel good about the strategy. I feel good about um, how they play. They're, they're not passive. They, they're ridiculously overpowered. When you attack with Sothogwa, um, second turn in Crawling Chaos had 16 power. I've seen 22 power on a Crawling Chaos. Um, yeah, I mean, that's 22 combat dice. He, he's as powerful as uh, um, Ubosathla, right? So this is a powerful faction, but there's almost too many things you can do and um, vice versa if you wait too long using lethargy 
you may find out that you don't have any combat power anymore. And so if that's the case, you must rely on the formless spawn because uh, towards the end of the round, the formless spawn have the combat dice and Sothogwa do not. All right, guys, with that, uh, I am really looking forward to seeing what you guys post down below. If there's, uh, so I, I've got a couple more sleeper videos that are gonna be coming out um, than Windwalker. And then it's back to the neutral um, boxes. I mean, they're not really any more sets like the Azathoth box, but I have a couple other, well actually I have a lot of other uh, Cthulhu War sets. And then maybe we'll start talking about the library of, of Selenos. And uh, other than that, though, if you have specific questions, maybe I'll make micro videos and, uh, and post those. So not everything has to be like the huge, the huge thing. And uh, with that, I, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, post down below and talk to you later. Bye, guys.